Hi guys, um, today we're going to be looking at uh, V-Ray again and we're just going to be looking at the physical sun and sky uh, how to get that working and some of the attributes that we're going to need to um, create and to get this uh, effect working so right out of the box if we hit render um, this is currently what we've got this is just a standard V-Ray um, default lighting so if we were to go into the render globals and under the V-Ray tab we were to scroll down to V-Ray Sun and Sky we can click on create sun which is our direct light and we can create sky which is our indirect light our environment the blueness as it were so we've got a sun and we've got a sky so let's hit render it would be just too easy wouldn't it if that works straight away so some of you may have come across this when you've tried using this in the past and we've got a very unusable image almost um, just completely contrasty looks like an alpha channel almost so there are a couple of different options that we need to sort out to get this working so the V-Ray uh, physical sun and sky works with a V-Ray physical camera now that's not something you just go off and, and create there's not a, uh, a tick box for a V-Ray uh, physical camera um, you have to select the camera you've got already and in the attribute editor, editor underneath the shape node um, we can see there aren't currently any V-Ray options within that if we click on the um, attributes tab we can go down to the V-Ray tab and we can click on physical camera at the bottom it's going to give us another option to open another drop down tab and we can see there's a button here that says treat as V-Ray physical camera and we'll click that so now we've got a V-Ray physical camera, so let's hit render. So here we can see we've got a different image. Um, still though it's very very contrasty, we've got some real solid black uh, shadows here and there's no real bounce light or anything um, look, looking nice about this image so what we need to do as a next step is to turn on um, V-Ray Global Illumination so just open up the render globals, go to indirect illumination and uh, at the GI box we'll just tick on um, I think by default a secondary bounce is actually set to brute force but I like to change mine to light cache So let's hit render. I'm just going to pause. So we can see we've got a much more, uh, a much nicer um, image to look at here. We've got some um, nice indirect lighting. We've got some nice bounces occurring. Um, and if you've used Mental Ray, um, Physical Sun and Sky, and Final Gary, it's a very similar looking image. Except um, the uh, Physical Sun and Sky um, Mental Ray image is usually a little bit more blurry to look at perhaps not as high quality or contrasty as this um, the image only took about 20 seconds to render as well and there's a fair amount of detail in there what's nice about this is because we've got so much direct light coming in from the um, sun node um, we're not getting many uh, splotches or um, uh, areas of uh, like poor GI so this is actually a, a great method to use with animation So the next thing we want to look at is that, I don't know if you can see on the monitor, but it's um, around the edges we've got a um, uh, a kind of vignette. There are some darker edges around here. And we don't really want this embedded in our video files because it's something we can add later on in post-production. So let's have a quick look uh, at these settings. So I'm just going to make sure the camera's selected. And we're going to go into the attributes. Uh, of the uh, V-Ray attributes and down here somewhere is uh, enable vignetting effect so we're going to switch that off and if I just render a little preview area over here which will give us some kind of indication of what sort of effect it was put in, into our image so we can see that it's putting quite uh, a different um, effect over the top of our images so it's good to switch this off and if you want to put it back on put it back on in post-production because if you render it like this you are locked into it so 
We've got a V-Ray physical camera. What can we do with it? Well, a V-Ray physical camera mimics real-world cameras, kind of. Um, at the moment, we're using a stills camera. So there are certain attributes we can play around with, like the f-stop, um, shutter speed, and the ISO. And if we play around with the ISO, we can um, make the image brighter or darker. Um, obviously, a smaller value will make the image darker. And a, br and a higher uh, value will make it brighter. So if I stick this to 200 and hit render, we can see that we've got a much brighter image occurring here. So let's just stick that back to 100. Now the tricky thing is, um, this this is a stills camera, and when you're rendering, this will, so you know great for stills. You can also render with a stills camera, a render animation. But when you're dealing with um, motion blur, I find it's best to use a video camera and you can select the type of camera uh, under the type tab and we can go to a sorry a movie camera. Now a movie camera reacts differently to a stills camera obviously and the um, ISO isn't used as much as we would use the F number for brightness and darkness. So if I take that down to about 2 and I'll just render a little region so here we can see that lowering the number creates an overly bright image if I put it back to 8 which is what it was for the stills camera you can see we're not going to get that much of a change. Okay, it's slightly um, slightly darker, but um, it's still really over bright. So if we stick this up to about 20, uh, yeah, let's just let's just check uh, uh, that area again before we do a full render. We can see that we've got a very different image. So maybe we want something around, whoa, 17. Possibly even less. Let's take it to 14 and do a full render. Okay, so now we're pretty much back to where we were with the stills camera. We've got lots of detail going on. Um, maybe a little bit sort of um, the exposure here, maybe a little bit too much, but we can change all this with the sun direction. And onto that, let's uh, have a look now. So just remember that a stills camera um, within the V-Ray physical camera attributes um, reacts very differently to a movie camera. And if we were to use a video camera, it would work much like a home video camera. So let's have a look at the actual sun itself. So inside this transform group is where um, the uh, sun and the, and the sky and the attributes reside. So I might rename that sun. So if we open it up, we've got a sun target and we've got a, uh, a sun manipulator that we can move around. So if we drag this out, this is kind of giving us um, a sort of gooey feedback on the sun direction and the distance from the object. So we can flip that over here and get a very different looking image. And the higher or lower the sun, the different time of day you're gonna get. So right over here, you're gonna get really a uh, um, kind of midday look. And then if we bring it up right down here, we're gonna get a much darker image. So let's just render that and have a look. So as you can see, that's reacting nicely. We can almost see the sun dropping down over here we get that nice kind of evening twilight look and really it's all about the project that you're working on um, and the type of mood that you want to reflect but um, yeah the V-Ray Sun Sky works very nicely um, obviously on this side of the train because we're getting less direct light we could have some issues uh, in rendering some um, splotches and stuff like that um, but then the next step we would we'd have to do a little test and then the next step we would perhaps go into um, the attributes of the uh, primary bounce 
and a secondary bounce and play around with the subdivisions which is the amount of rays that is casting into the scene um, there's also as I say with most projects um, 70 percent of what I do and render is done in post-production afterwards so it may be that we want to um, get some better lighting in there sort of over bright and then just correct um, in post-production so maybe we have our sun a little bit higher and we can just mess around in post just so that we've, our renders are less problematic to deal with so that's the physical sun and sky um, we can actually add in some automatic uh, di uh, this, is, this is the manual way basically of creating uh, different times of day um, you can also animate that so if you wanted to go from sort of day to night you could animate that around an arc which uh, is quite a cool little thing you can select these CIE clear which will give you a kind of a, a, a nice clear horizon and overcast for uh, different types different types of look um, you can also go into the sun itself and if we untick manual position we've then got um, lots of lots of different um, attributes to play around with so we can put in a month um, let's say we go with um, March um, we can put in the date and we can also select the time zone um, so you know if you're in America select your time zone and it will kind of mimic the sort of weather you would get uh, approximately in that kind of um, time zone um, I'm just looking for my one actually we want a uh, um, London UK London I don't know I can spend too much time looking for that but any time anyway if we went to somewhere like I don't know uh, Caribbean and we put it at 12 o'clock during the day local minute is 3 10 and the hour is 12 something and the year is I don't know it's quite funny you can go to the future really uh, the year is 2010 and you can play around with the latitude and longitude and the distance to the target which is going to give you a different type of shadow as well so a lot closer you're going to get a harsher shadow and uh, we'll just take a render and see what madness this has um, created so there we go but actually strangely enough very similar to the uh, manual uh, attribute that we put in so we can change uh, sun position and all sorts we can go back into the sun shape node and we can mess around with the size multiplier which is going to change um, the softness of your shadows so if you want um, stronger shadows like sharper shadows or pull this down further up um, for softer shadows so let's just have a little look at what that does to our shadow around here it's starting to get much softer around there and we can also uh, bring up the subdivisions we can also play around with the turbidity um, this will kind of change the look um, it will kind of thicken up the air almost and it will um, change like the colour of the sun and the sky so lower that value if you want kind of a clearer image higher that value if you want a more sort of atmospheric image so I don't know, let's try taking this up to 15 you can see that the colors changed here so if I just do a little preview there we can see that we've got a more sort of yellowy look it's kind of useless really because we can do that in post let's do that back to 3 ozone does a similar thing that's just going to change like the color of the sunlight so turn it up higher should get a more sort of blue looking image yep you can see the difference between there and there and if we bring that much lower we should get a more yellowy sort of image yep so you can see that's more yellow that that and that so there are the settings I can't remember what that was on yeah. 
Um, and that's about it guys, obviously you can click invisible if you don't want to see this guy here, but it should have an alpha channel to it anyway, so you can get rid of that in post production. You can still render out all your different render layers, um, have a look if you've got any problem with your GI. I might just quickly go over that while we're here actually. So if I just go into the global illumination tab and go into the render elements, and I'm just going to click on diffuse, add that, I'm going to click on um, GI, I'm going to add that and yeah I think I'm just going to leave it like that for now just close that, just do a render, I'm just going to pause so that's rendered now and if we go and have a look in the diffuse tab we can see we've just got a pure diffuse that's our pure flat colour so we can see the background and the foreground element different and if we go into GI we can see this is our GI pass um, this is a good way of troubleshooting your images um, if you do a GI pass you can see if you've got like poor GI really really low amount of samples you'll start to see some splotches we can see some it's looking a little bit dirty around here um, so more samples would get rid of that but in fairness it's um, not a bad image at all and obviously if you brought the light up higher we've got more direct light into the scene then um, we're going to get less splotches but they are there and it's a good way of troubleshooting your scene um, to work out where there's a problem. Also, if you ever get any kind of harsh lines around the edges of your bevels, um, specular highlights, render out some passes. Um, make sure you render out a reflection pass as well, and a specular pass. Then when you've rendered that image, you can go in and look at those passes and work out what's giving you issues. With those harsh lines of specular, they look kind of dusty and pixelated um, around tight bevels more often than not it's something to do with your reflections and you'll see that in your um, reflection pass uh, that then means that you can go and crank up your reflection subdivisions um, in your uh, shader attributes anyway guys hope that was helpful I'm sure a lot of you that have got V-Ray have been over this and know how to do this no problem whatsoever but I'm sure there are some people that may be thinking about looking into V-Ray um, and this is um, one of the I, pr I find one of the nicer options over Mental Ray, uh, Physical Sun Sky and Final Gather. Take care guys and I'll see you in the next tutorial. Bye bye.